Okie dokie. Well, here with Coach Hav, we're giving you a special ride into the channel. Uh, this is about the history of AKA Javier and the start of the UFC and all these other fight leagues from all the different martial arts. So what we got here today, Hav? Well, here, if you notice, there I am right there in 1985 at uh, Capital Glass Shop owned by Jim and Sandy Armeta. And on Union Avenue was a glass shop, as you notice the cars right here. And uh, we, we went on, uh, you know, concrete floor. We go out and clean up. Uh, started 1985 there. You can see that. We used to have bandanas. You notice I have a yellow bandana. Yeah. And that all changed one day when I was at the boxing gym and, they, and I was wearing a, um, a blue bandana. And the guy asked me, hey, Hob, why are you wearing the blue bandana? I said, well, it's for my thing. He goes, bro. He goes, that's gang. And I go... I'm, I'm Mexican. What do you mean? Gang goes, bro, there's Norteño or Soreño. You, right now, you're wearing a Soreño. That means you you go outside, you get in trouble. Ah, I stopped the bandana thing, so we no longer wear the bandana. You notice he has a green one, you know, and uh, that's Larry Tornacasa, one of my best buds. And So, glass shop days. Then we went to my first gym, gym on Union Avenue. Scott Coker's Taekwondo gym. And there I am here with long hair and glasses. You can see that. And I'm teaching... Basically, uh, the old Taekwondo way, you know, martial arts way, walk up and down yelling one, two, three, everybody kicks. And uh, here I am with my buddy that got me involved in kickboxing, Juan Alexander. This is the person I talk about who's, unfortunately, my buddy passed away about 10 years ago or longer. Um, but he's the one that got me involved in the fight game. Here's a sparring situation at the glass shop. <laughs> and you can tell the glass doors and... One time, one of my guys hit, there was glass like here, sliding the guy, when the guy hit the back, sliced his back, and I guess that was the last we ever did sparring there. We started and we stopped pretty quick. Then it went to here, sparring. So that's the Capitol Glass Shop uh, days went from here to my first martial arts gym was in 1987, 1987 there. Here's my first girl student, you know, uh, Stephanie Serna. She's a... Uh, going to probably join me in Las Vegas if we open a gym, a gym there. And here's my first uh, coach, Pops, Walt Carvalho, probably uh, the biggest influence in my life. Uh, he really, no matter what I did, I could never do anything wrong in his eyes. I was always, you know, you know, his guy and his boy, and he was always there supporting me. And uh, you can see our first shirt right here. It says American Kickboxing Academy with this. And, you know, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> we don't have those shirts anymore. And uh, Anyways, well, there's Pops, the biggest mentor I've had in my whole entire life still to this day. A lot of what he taught me I still use. Um, here's another one, Arturo Mata, another coach that I had that taught me movement. He really was instrumental in helping me become a world champion. Uh, here's my toughest fight ever as an amateur or a pro. The guy's name was Thunderwolf. He, he was actually a heavyweight. I was not a heavyweight. I got tricked into fighting him. <laughs> Here's the person that named American Kickboxing Academy, a.k.a. This guy, Kim Rhodes. And right behind them is Ernie Reyes uh, Sr., the, uh, the, the founder of uh, West Coast Taekwondo. Uh, you know, still a good friend to this day. Uh, but it was Kim Rhodes right here that started the name. He's the one that, that uh, he goes, hey, you need a name for your gym. And I go, well, I don't know. I was thinking some Korean type name. He goes, he goes, why don't you just name it American Kickboxing Academy? I said, dude, I'm Mexican. He goes, he goes, oh, well, you were born north in, in, uh, in North America, right? I go, yeah, I was born in North America. Well, that's still U.S. There you go. So American Kickboxing Academy. Okay, now, AKA. Look at the size difference here. What, what, how much did you weigh compared to this? Uh, I weighed with cowboy boots, leather jacket, uh, <laughs> jeans, and, and I had cold, rolls of quarters in my pocket. He outweighed me by still about 10 pounds, but but total 25. Wow. Yeah, he hit me pretty hard. He rocked me. The guy gave me a concussion. Anyways, here we are here with some of our friends, Ian Eichler, you know, I've, uh, Scott Boggs, I think it's Boggs or whatever. He's a police officer. Francis Farley, Footless Farley. There I am with the big smile, with the big hair. There's Pops, Lynn Schutz, Alex Combabian, who became my first world champion here. Uh, then I here's Alex come here right here, actually fighting. Uh, he was my first world champion, Alex Kambavian. And then uh, my first UFC fighter was Brian Johnston right here. This is my sparring partner with North American boxing champion uh, Cecil McKenzie. We used to just box. He was my best sparring partner ever. Uh, some of my former students, Brian Johnston, Gary Owens, kickboxing champions. Uh, Travis was a three three. Uh, 
pretty sport uh, guy. He did MMA, kickboxing, boxing. He did it all. Um, here's Josh Thompson earlier on. Still punk. Always going to be a punk. Famous podcaster. Yeah, famous podcaster. Yeah, and then oh, back yes. over here, my first introduction to the UFC was with Brian Johnston. And this, this MMA started because of this individual, Brian Johnston. And I'll show you how. Brian Johnston, as you can tell, here he is right here, me and Brewster Thompson, we're going there in Augusta, Augusta, Georgia. There I am right here. You can see me back there. That's Todd Milan, good friend, that's Brian. Uh, here's Brian again right here. Here's Brian with Ken Shamrock. You know, and here's the ultimate fighting where he fought. This one was, this one was where? Uh, this was, uh, uh, this was the ultimate ultimate. This was my first introduction with uh, Paul Varlins, uh, Polar Bear. He fought in this one. I, me and Brian went with him on this one. Paul wasn't officially my guy, but, but I went with him to this event. And again, but this is the main guy that started MMA in my gym, Brian Johnston. Because of Brian Johnston, you know, when he went to Japan, he became a, a, a wrestler over there, famous wrestler. And he brought over a lot of the famous wrestlers. Fujita came through him, uh, gold medalist, uh, the heavyweight gold medalist in judo, uh, in, in Nagawa or something like that. He came. Mm. He, I, I can't even name the list. So many fighters. people. Yeah, and then a uh, result of Brian Johnston, the first superstar to come to me was Frank Shamrock because of Brian Johnston. He introduced me to Brian, and as you can tell, is Frank, Frank there. Frank there with, with Kung Lee, another one of my guys was Kung Lee. And so your guys your guys actually fought each other in some yeah, cases. Yeah, they fought each other, and then a lot of guys fought each other. It was, it was the big famous fight between Frank Shamrock and Tito Ortiz. That was probably one of the greatest fights ever for me. Was that the championship, right? Yeah, it's the championship fight. And he beat, he beat Tito, he beat who was bigger than him. He was a lot bigger Tito than him. Tito weighed him by a good 30 pounds, I think, probably fight time. Right, you know, Frank. Frank, when we went to Wendy's the day before, to, <laughs> to his cutting weight, he went to Wendy's the day before. <laughs> yeah, Frank was he, he was he wasn't worried about the weight. It was just a matter. But anyways, this is Frank's stuff. Well, you get here. You also get uh, over Baroni. Baroni. So yeah. he came through here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wasn't made here. Good. No, he started back east. Started, yes, back east. So right. Anyway, so there you got it. The whole bit. More to come. More to come.